William Hill Vegas sponsors Joshua vs. White on Sky Sports Box Office. Radio Rahim with the victorious Anthony Joshua. So many questions were answered tonight. You're a young fighter. You say that yourself on the come up. Yeah. There was more tests for you mentally than even what took place in the battle itself. After the first round, there's melee. Everyone enters the ring. That can yeah. throw you off mentally. How did you handle that interruption? It's really interesting, you know. There was a lot at stake, and I think that's what drew that out of us. It wasn't so much about the British title. That was a bonus of the fight. But I expected things like this because I know the character of my opponent. So stuff like that really just brought me back to the character I was dealing with. And uh, we got back to the corners. The security done a great job of keeping the fight alive and then that was it we just come out and carried on boxing and that's all it was so it was a bit of commotion but I know who I'm dealing with when I'm fighting certain opponents and I expect that from him in the by the end of the first round the fans were on their chairs they were <laughs> cheering they thought they were just going to see another early knockout by uh, Anthony Joshua when you realized that wasn't going to happen yeah. what did you have to do mentally to settle back down and be like alright let me go back to the game plan it was only after the third round because I thought the second one I'm going to do what I'd done to him in the first round I thought I was just an inch away from getting, getting him out there early so I realised, OK, subconsciously, this is a 12-round fight. I'm in with someone who's tucking up and that wants to go the distance and take me into later rounds. He was hit, trying to hit me to the body and slow me down. So little things, I was just thinking as I went along. And uh, after the third round, I took my time and I thought, let me just get back to what I'm good at. Keep on boxing, keep on boxing. And uh, from the eighth round, I caught him with certain shots and I managed to get him out of there. So I just take my time, you know, in 12-round fights and just keep on doing what I'm doing in order to win the fight. I've got enough power to hurt them. So why rush? Just keep on doing what I'm doing and my opportunity will come. You ultimately got him out there in the seventh. We saw that. Was it the but seventh round? It was the seventh. That's what was I think. It, I think it was, the, I was it, it the eighth. I don't know. No, no, you didn't make it to the eighth. I thought he would go out earlier. I think people were out of their chairs so many times. Yeah. When you saw him absorb the really the best shots that you had and mm, keep coming, mm, mm, mm. How, what did that make you do and, and, and think, am I going to be in here for 12 rounds with yeah. this guy? That's what I thought. So I said to myself, let me just take it round by round. Three minutes work, one minute rest. Three minutes work, one minute rest. And just don't do anything stupid because when you've got two guys that are big and strong, it takes that first person to switch off. And you do something silly, you get caught with a silly shot. Um, it's not, it may not be the fact that the person's better than you. It's just the fact that I've lack of concentration over a 12-round distance. And uh, that's what I thought. I thought. Let me just stay switched on, do what I do, and compose myself because it's a, this is going to be a 12-round fight and I will catch him as the fight goes on and let me not be the man to switch off and be on the end of a, of a receiving big haymaker. You know, to fight you for seven rounds the way he did, you got to do more than just absorb heavy shots. That means he did things in there that, that he did well. Yeah. What do you think he did well in there and did anything give you trouble? Um, he was relaxed. There are certain things he was relaxed, um, which he'd been working on. So what happens when you're relaxed? You just keep on popping shots, keep on popping shots. I was waiting to counter him, um, and he was countering as well, which he'd done well. And that was it. He was just throwing shots at the body and over the top. And as I said, he was just doing well at, you know, tenting up and covering up every time I threw a big shot. And that was all. And then as soon as he switched off for one minute, I managed to land my haymaker, and that was a uh, good night. He said a lot of things in the build-up to this fight, uh, insults, allegations, you dealt with all that with class, and then at the end of the fight, usually we see warriors come together and show each other that mutual respect after a battle. That didn't happen. Had it happened, though, what would you have said to him? Had it happened? Not much. Just well done. And I want to fight you again, probably. Um, that's all. Not much. I just think he gave me what I needed. I said he'll probably be the man to take me past three rounds. I said if there's anything he can do, he'll probably take me past three rounds. So that's what I need. So I'll tell you that you're, you're a good fighter for me right now. So well done. You, you, you proved yourself to a certain extent. And lastly, Deontay Wilder's on the other side of that pond. You may want, uh, you know, Dylan again, but probably the fans would like to see you maybe take that title shot or one of these other guys that are doing well. He's a relatively young fighter too. Do you feel like your skills match his? Are you ready for that kind of challenge? Most definitely. Why not? Um, as I said, I just think it would be a good fight. Like right now, I don't think at British level, that's why I was saying certain things to myself because British level – you know, I shouldn't have a little mark on my face. You know, I should come out there looking as I walked in. That's how I, um, that's how I train, and that's how it should be. But I sh it showed that no matter how good you think you are, you're always going to come stuck at some stages, and you've got to step up a level. So Wilder's time will come, and when it does, I just hope he's ready because I'll be, I'll definitely be ready, and I would up my game.
you're a star here, uh, you know, on this side of the pond. Is it important to you to become a star in America? This fight right here is the, is the first step in that direction. And if you fight Deontay Wilder, can you stop him? Yeah, it's definitely important to become a star in America. And um, that's why I'm talking with guys like yourself. I know you're big out in the States. So shout out to everyone that, that's locked in. And uh, I think for sure, because like I watch the Eric Molina fights, I watch the, the last Doofus fights and so on. And I think as world champion, you know, that's why I say I'm going to take my time because I'm British champ. And by the time I'm world champion, I won't be making the mistakes he makes. You know, he's fighting like a British champion at the minute. You know, he should be knocking guys out like Tyson's did and Foreman's did and so on. And he should be comparing himself to these guys. I think he needs to up his game as a champion. He's talented, but as a champion, you need to up your game. And uh, when I get to that level, as I said, I'll be ready to fight guys like Wilder. And I should be destroying these guys when I'm, a, I'm an elite fighter. Anthony Joshua, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Pleasure. Thank you for having the hospitality, having me in your country. You're a class act, man. I look forward to covering you for years into the future. Radio Rahim with Anthony Joshua. William Hill Vegas sponsors Joshua vs. White on Sky Sports Box Office.